So we start with what is money? Now, uh, we look at the response to this in three. It's one, a store of value. Um, two, it's a medium of exchange. And three, it's a unit of account. And all of the FinTech people here know this. All of the uh, Switch uh, people know this, of course. Your gentleman in Hargesa knows this very well. Um, and so the idea is money um, gyrates between these three fields. Um, some monies, some assets, commodities, et cetera, might be a better form of money, right? So I think we've also um, come to this understanding. Uh, we're looking at something like gold, for example. It might be a great store of value, right? And the uh, dollar and the uh, uh, BTC equivalent uh, units of account, gold has been a powerhouse for 3,000 years, yes? So it's been a, a beautiful store of value. It's, it's integrated into our, our culture, our society. Um, I think Ethiopians are quite fond of gold. Similarly, Indians are quite fond of gold. It's become a, a measure of our um, uh, culture as well. Uh, but is gold a good medium of exchange? Um, and so this might be where I ask the gentleman from Hargesa. So as I move into the third point, gentleman from, from Hargesa, Ahmed? You can call me Gulet. 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 Gulet, yes. Gulet it is. So uh, is gold a good medium of exchange? Uh, have you used it to transact? Do you have it in your pockets right now to buy a cup of coffee? That's, you know, what are your sentiments on gold, um, you know, on, in these other fields, but particularly as, as a medium of exchange? So in my nation, in my country, we buy gold for our wives. In the same time, it is an investment into the family. So on a rainy day, <laughs> we have gold. <laughs> rainy day. On a rainy day, yeah. So anything extra we have, we always invest in gold, and we give it to our wives. I learned it from my mother. My father used to do that 40 years ago. And we don't really see it as a currency. We just see it as a backbone of, of the household. It's not a currency. It's, it's a gift a for the household. Correct. It's something you accumulate. Correct. But I uh, do mining business as well, and in my tenements, we have gold, and God willing, we start the first gold operation next year. So there's a lot of gold in Somaliland. It's a pegmatite land. And the biggest issue, it is very difficult to extract, and the knowledge didn't exist. Our sector is growing now. Uh, but I would think in Somaliland, maybe every household's assets, 30% is gold. Belongs 30, to the mother. 30% the of their 30%, assets. Yes, per assets will be gold. Yami, help me move the microphone to... Uh, G, uh, thank you for your response. There's something that I want to ask G. How do you see gold? Because you extract it, if, if I'm not mistaken, yes? Uh, yeah, I do uh, gold mining. I started this about a, a year ago or something. So uh, gold is, uh, is, I see it as an, uh, a currency. So yeah, nothing much to say. <laughs> Yeah. No. Perfect. Perfect. So, you know, this is the honest truth that some some you know assets are better uh, medium of exchanges than others. Uh, you know, you're trading it as a store of value. You're accumulating. You're adding on to it. You're hoping not to sell it. And so, this is also the uh, perspective we take um, when we're teaching about Bitcoin, right? So, it's an asset that we are want to uh, hold um, for the long term um, because we think it's going to increase in value, not over the next day or month or even year, but over the course of generations. Uh, so uh, the next step in our teaching is, is you know, Nixon in 1971. This is the end of the gold standard. And so because there was a, a break between the US dollar and the gold standard, uh, we can no longer say we have um, gold-backed currency um, in the United States. Now, that, of course, matters, not just because it's election day, but um, it's the uh, world uh, reserve currency, yes. So we use it in a lot of our trade and our barter. And so what happened in 1971, I think, directly affects uh, merchants globally. Um, so this is an important point. It's often missed. It's often confused. Um, I've been teaching this for three years now, and I still see this uh, wrongly uh, quoted. So th this is kind of, uh, you know, it leads into an Austrian or a libertarian 
um, a School of, e of Economics. Uh, there's of course a Keynesian model, which is more of a you know printing money or creating more currency is not necessarily bad. So that's that's their belief, and uh, uh, they by they uh, Congress, Treasury, um, uh, the United States Reserve, the Federal Reserve, they set uh, inflation rates at two percent. Mm. Now. Uh, things might be healthy if things were always inflationary at 2%, but what we've seen is in the US, it's climbed up to 7 and 8% in very recent history, right? 2020, 2021. And in Ethiopia, it's reached 20, 30. We have even seen 40% on some of our uh, consumer items, right? The CPI, the Consumer Product Index, I think it is. Um, and so this is where the problem starts, and it's it's a very big problem. It's uh, people have tried to address it for years, um, and I think this is the solution. So that's why we're in this room today. That's why I think this industry is here. Um, we have some beautiful sponsors. I'll talk about them later, but yeah, they're a bit shy. They they're very happy to you know to, to sponsor and give, but. And they're, they're a bit shy, so we'll give them their privacy. Um, but, but I think beside that point, uh, this industry is growing, it's huge. We'll talk about numbers, there were some numbers released yesterday. Um, but we'll, we'll continue talking about the problem before we get to the solution. Uh, we've discussed some of these items, um, inflation target rates, we haven't been meeting them, um, we're exceeding them. Um, in the past year, uh, we should give credit to our local um, commercial bank, uh, National Bank of Ethiopia, uh, led by uh, Governor Mamo. Um, I think they understand the issue, they understand the problem, and they've taken great steps to um, curve inflation, I think is what they call it. Um, so they're pulling back credit, they're pulling back loans, they're pulling the the cash and the money out of the economy. Um, and I think that's lending itself into lower real estate prices and so on. But on some food items, on rentals, for example, in the middle of the city, we've, we've seen you know uh, excessive price increases, um, probably exacerbated by the construction. Um, uh, of course, you know you might have to take a few steps back to go forward. But uh, this is the domain of the central bank, and they've taken steps to address. So now we come to the solution, cryptography. Some of you guys know this better than me, um, but at least for the cameras, at least for our discourse, this is a great place to start. 1974 to 2000, uh, I'm sorry, 1974 to 2008, we can call this the, <clears throat> the research phase. Um, the academia phase. So you had um, Raf uh, Merkel, Adam Beck, who I've met uh, in Miami, uh, Nick Sabo, Hal Finney, who passed away, I want to say about 10 years ago. Uh, and you had these gentlemen uh, leading the academic uh, research of uh, cryptography, right? Now, what is cryptography? I think we can simply say um, public key, private key, uh, messaging, right? So you have a message being sent on a somewhat open platform um, and you're able to encrypt that message with a private key um, and no one can open that message or sign that message um, without that private key. We call it a seed phrase. It's a 12 um, a word password uh, and uh, that actually leads me to a a small note, we have a Bitcoin giveaway, so we don't have um, a gift box, we don't have trinkets, we have Bitcoin. <laughs> so uh, it, hopefully it'll encourage us to learn a little bit more about um, the public key, private key cryptography. <clears throat> now, this is very important because Ethiopia has taken great strides um, to embed itself in this community. Uh, not only the work of, of Dawit, of some of the programmers here, but um, the work of INSA, the work of 
the prime minister's office and I believe the prime minister um, himself, uh, they have uh, launched uh, the PKI, the Public Key um, Infrastructure Initiative. Um, it got some attention, um, but it's uh, paramount for the security of this country's uh, messaging and so on. Um, and so with that note, um, predecessors uh, of Bitcoin include uh, Hash Cash, B Money, E Gold, Bitgold, DigiCash. So these were released in the 90s, right, in the early 2000s um, within the world of academia, right? So they were kind of practicing, um, seeing how far it gets them. And it wasn't until 2009 that we were introduced to Bitcoin through Satoshi Nakamoto. He's a bit of a uh, unknown figure, if you will. Uh, we don't know who he is. It might be a she, it might be a group, or so on. There are movies made about this gentleman. There's, you know, folklore. It's been 15 years now. Uh, but the main idea is he released the Bitcoin white paper, short paper. Um, it was actually decoded into Amaringa, it was translated into Amaringa by um, uh, some local programmers here. But uh, it allows us to uh, keep a sovereign uh, uh, code base, if you will. Um, and so it's a very unique innovation. Um, and it allows us to harness energy, um, a proof of work, they call it SHA-256 a secure hash algorithm, uh, 256, 256 bit. Um, and so uh, that allows the engine to work. Um, and so if you think of this network as an engine of peer-to-peer -peer transactions, I'm gonna show you some live blocks coming into formation, right? So every 10 minutes, we're gonna see some blocks um, uh, move, we're gonna see you know, billions of dollars of, of value transact on, on this open source, public, decentralized, permissionless protocol. So I think it's amazing. I've been doing this for three or four years now, and I, I fell into this world, I read a few books, and I was like, wow, there's a code base, it's code, right? It's lines of code. I'm not too technical, but I was able to understand some and it allows you to move value. There's only 21 million of them. Um, so that goes back to the Federal Reserve, right? Creating endless dollars. They're 37 trillion in debt. They don't know what they're doing and funding endless wars, right? So there's a big problem that we had already outlined and there's a potential solution here and so I think it's, it's a really a amazing innovation. And, uh, and I think my starting point was uh, somehow the uh, influencer field. I know we have two radio hosts here, uh, Cami and Luna. Um, before Bitcoin, I worked for Grant Thornton, Audit Advisory and so on, and then I, I did marketing for them. And I developed a small database of influencers on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and so on. And I said, hey, look, I have a few brands, Coca-Cola, Heineken, you know, Marriott, X, Y, and Z. You know, um, why don't I create a, a simple spreadsheet that I'll release on the open source, and it allows us to coordinate between events it will be able to get to an event and take a photo and a video and capture that and share pricing and all of this. It did very well. It made me absolutely no money, but it did very well. And a lot of people started using it. Anyway, I got introduced to the world of open source. And so this is something I wanna share to this community as, as much as possible. Normally I'm speaking to students, you know, 500 people at a time. Um, today I'm speaking to a very interesting audience, right? Miners, investors, regulators, and so on. But I think everyone in this room can benefit from the open source community. 
So there's a website called GitHub. I'm going to introduce you to that. It's owned by Microsoft. Uh, you can plug in and share the code base um, of engineers and programmers around the world. So this is how uh, I joined the rabbit hole. This is how I kind of dug in. And year by year, uh, starting with sponsorships from Heineken to promote beer, right? I mean, think of the, the, the five-year gap, right? Five years ago, I was using this engine to, you know, find the best business practices and so on. And today, it led me to what I believe is the best money and the best way for Ethiopia to generate money, right? Uh, so this is quite self-explanatory. So Bitcoin nodes, um, think of a node as a full list of all of the transactions that have occurred in the past 15 years. So 15 years, 2009, you had a Genesis block, you had a Satoshi Nakamoto emailing with a private list, uh, Hal Finney being one, very talented engineers, um, a very small group of people, and they figured out a better money, and transactions began to occur, right? First in test, um, again, it came from an academia world, and then at some point, people started buying pizza with it, right? Somebody would say, hey, look, deliver two pizzas, you guys know the story, and then say, okay, I'll pay you 10,000 Bitcoin, right? And then, wow, at that point, we didn't know what it was, so we were just kind of freely sharing it around, right? And, um, and so we had a few, you know, and we, we won't go through pricing or charts at all, but um, you know, we can look at a block, right? And there are more than, you know, 850,000 blocks today because they confirm every 10 minutes we're going to see a live view of the blockchain as it confirms. Um, and in each block, you have, you know, 2,000 transactions. And I can see them. I can't see names, but I can see private addresses. I can see public, um, I can see, um, excuse me, I can see public addresses. I can't see private uh, passwords. And so we'll look at the Bitcoin node um, as it confirms live. Um, and there's about five, 600 gigabytes of data if you wanted to um, download all of the transactions um, uh, today, you can do that. You would just need 500 gigabytes. Um, so, and this is quite accessible um, in today's uh, hardware realm. This is very accessible. So Satoshi, uh, these, numbers, these numbers are a bit dated, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they're very dated. Uh, 11,800 ETB um, was uh, several weeks ago, right? Um, I think it's climbed maybe two, two burr um, since then on the bank rate. And then, of course, we all know there's a parallel market. There's a black market rate. Um, the government's been making steps to kind of encourage that market to join the formal market. Um, and I think they're quite close. It's going to be a... Uh, you know, a, a battle to keep that market here in the legal realm, but um, that's what the rates are. And then, of course, you have Satoshi, which is a unit of account of Bitcoin. So you have a hundred thousand, I'm sorry, a hundred million Satoshi in one Bitcoin. So this is very important. And usually, this is where you uh, separate the, um, I, I don't know if I can, I can't. Uh, curse here, but the BSers from uh, someone that actually understands how the uh, code base works, right? So um, a very easy catch. And I'm, I'm almost entrusting you with some of this information because you have a lot of, uh, let's call them misinformation, scammers, right? Liars, if you will. So if someone doesn't understand the basic math that goes into a Bitcoin, right? A hundred million Satoshi. Uh, it's like Mato Santim or a hundred cents into a dollar, right? So this is a very, uh, um, let's call it a, a, a cornerstone in your education. Lightning Network. Lightning Network um, allows you to send Bitcoin at a cheaper um, transaction fee, right? So 
And normally it's recommended for amounts under $200, $100 channels, which are you know payment channels between addresses. Um, they often have girth limitations or channel limitations on how much you can send. Um, on Lightning, um, it's a 0% fee. And so that makes it very attractive for merchants and traders in Africa because they're taking transactions, five, ten dollars, and so on. So the Lightning Network is a free network. It allows you to speed up your transactions to near instant speed. Um, if you were to use the Bitcoin, we call it on-chain um, transaction network, uh, you might pay you know, one or two percent transaction fee. And we have some people from, from Binance, obviously our sponsors from No Ones, they'll be able to guide us on this uh, very well. Um, and so this is what the transaction network looks like. Now, we're dealing into some murky territory here, right? Is this legal? Can you produce a transaction receipt, an invoice, a fee note? Not sure yet, right? QuickBook, QuickBooks owned by Intuit allows you to Excel, and Microsoft allow you to use this as a unit of account. Um, your local office here, managed by OFAG, Office of the Federal Auditor General, as well as the Ministry of Finance, um, as well as just your generally accepted audit principles. They might not um, see this as a, an appropriate way to transact. So, you know, the onus is on you. Where are you? What are you doing? How are you doing this? Um, but it's a very interesting protocol and network and very valuable. I think you guys will each spin this into your own ventures. So um, this is the basic information. <clears throat> mining. We're starting to get warm here. So mining is the idea that you have hardware. Um, and the hardware uh, is... Actually, let me see if I can pull up some images. Uh, maybe not. So uh, mining is the idea that you have hardware um, running, uh, let's call it compute, SHA-256 algorithm. This is what the hardware does. It serves no other purpose. Uh, an A6 computer chip, application-specific integrated uh, chip, I believe it stands for. And so these machines predominantly are coming in from China. Um, they are coming in from suppliers such as Bitmain, uh, Canon, as well as um, Wet's Miner. These are some of the big suppliers. They cost about one to $2,000 each. And so the miners here, they're investing um, millions of dollars, right? Now, it's, it's very hard to look at CapEx and say X, Y, and Z. I represent a company, right? One of the leading sponsors, West Data Group. Uh, like I said, they're a bit shy, <laughs> but they're, they're very um, uh, bold investors here. They've committed uh, $15 million um, on their first phase, um, which is a 30 megawatt project in Bole Lemi and they're expanding to Huelaita uh, Soto. And there they have a 20 megawatt facility. So they're looking for stranded energy, pockets of energy that aren't being used by the city or the industrial parks and so on. And so mining here, I think, is a very uh, important industry. And so this mining reward, how long will it go on? As it matures every four years, it exactly halves, right? So the reward today, 3.125 uh, uh, Bitcoin, um, this is reduced every four years. So it's gonna be 1.7 uh, and so on. Um, and so this reward uh, goes on until the year 2140. So this reward will continue to occur for another 100 years. So exchanges. So here is where we get into another sponsor, No Ones. Um, they're of course in the back, led by Frisco, um, Ariella, uh, Ray Youssef. Um, he'll join us at some point. 
Um, he uh, also is, is behind uh, No Ones. He's their CEO, and he calls himself a, a war chief. He's very, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a beautiful soul. Um, and so when you look at the Bitcoin that have been mined already, um, about 19 or million have been mined. Um, so they are now in the market, right? Um, we have uh, about another 2 million um, that have yet to be mined. Um, and so of the 19 million that have been mined, 14 million um, are off of the exchanges, right? So they're no one's or Coinbase, Binance, it's not necessarily in their hands. Um, it's in a hardware wallet, right? It's been, uh, the idea is put in a, um, a safety deposit box, you know, uh, uh, and, it, and, and it's been put into a kazna, if you will, in Amarinya. And so this is also where uh, the education um, should serve us very well. This is why I alluded to the Prime Minister's project, the PKI, PKI initiative, um, taking custody of your Bitcoin is of utmost importance. And, uh, and during the giveaway, this is something that we hope to teach. This is something that we hope to incentivize and encourage. Everybody in this room should act as, I, I'm considering you as you know, ambassadors of learning now. So, you know, for example, if I have a, a friend in Somalia or Somaliland or Argesa, Dredowa, I know exactly where to go because of, um, you know, I think our, our community here. So this point of failure, uh, it's a, uh, when I can speak quite frankly, it's going to be very painful <laughs> if you don't learn this correctly. I've had a lot of friends call me because they've lost uh, serious amounts of money, right? And so uh, now this is just a test case, $5, $10, we'll have gift cards and so on. But uh, this is a very important note. And so if there's one thing that you do take away, it's that there's a correct form of custody management. And everyone here from, you know, INSA to, you know, Hello Cash and so on um, should be made aware of this. And I think we can incorporate this into our teaching. Um, but a store of value um, uh, leads into some very interesting conversations because, uh, hello, Mr. Yuan, hello, Marta, good morning. So uh, some of our sponsors just walked in. So, um, you know, this is, I think, a, um, uh, let me go back to our, so, you know, this is a point I think we can um, uh, go over and, and, you know, we can really, um, share some of our experiences if need be, but um, you know the, the the problem I faced is I've had a lot of friends that I've taught Bitcoin to reach out to me and say they've lost X amount of money because it wasn't stored well, right? And it's not uh, even like retail residential. This is like corporate treasury stuff, right? So imagine uh, now when we get to sovereignty, right? When we get to really being able to take your uh, money off of an exchange, uh, you only have yourself to trust and you only have yourself to blame. And so, yeah, this is an important point. Um, and I hope you share this with, with your friends forward. Benchmark value, you know, I think it's, it's been very difficult to track, but, you know, we have um, Bitcoin at roughly a trillion of value right? Market value is very difficult to assess because nobody's going to buy all of the Bitcoin in the world at a, on a single transaction. So value is slips up and down, if you will. But if we wanted to take a rough estimate, there's a trillion dollars of value in Bitcoin, right? Now, there's also another trillion in all of the crypto, right? Um, the Ethereums, the Cardanos, the Solanas, X, Y, and Zs. So make what you will. I try to concentrate on the Bitcoin market. I think it's more interesting. There's a little bit more power infrastructure there. Um, we'll talk a, more about what um, Dahab Miners is doing, West Data is doing, BitCluster is doing. Um, I think the Bitcoin side is, is interesting, but of course our friends, Dawit, you know, they, they very much, you know, the blockchain community very much looks at the other uh, crypto tokens. Um, and so that's a different field 
that maybe we can discuss another day. You look at silver, uh, colloquially we call it burr, right? Our, our currency, even the name is tied to silver. Um, it's at 1.3 trillion, right? Gold, roughly 10 trillion. Again, nobody's ever gonna buy all the gold in the world, right? We might uh, have an asteroid one day and, and you know, maybe we get more gold and then higher supply or lower demand, but we can say roughly 10 million dollars, trillion, excuse me, I confuse the T's and the B's, 10 trillion dollars of gold in the world. And then we look at the gold bull bond market, right? We look at uh, money moving through equities and securities and, you know, countries uh, reaching out to the World Bank for debt and so on. So we can see the, the global economy is quite big. And, and what this shows us is that Bitcoin, if we're to take it seriously, is only 1% there, right? Actually less, it's 0.3% uh, there. Um, because the idea is that you know, we don't stop in Ethiopia, we don't stop at $70,000 of Bitcoin, this thing goes to the moon. That's the idea. And that's what my clients, the, our sponsors uh, keep telling me, that's what we're now seeing. I'm gonna share some data from the Africa report that shows Ethiopian electric power is now generating $55 million a year um, as of the past year. For the next year, they're projected at $123 million. Um, and this is coming from uh, ELPA, Ethiopian electric power. Um, uh, I believe director Hewitt um, hopefully he'll join us later uh, after our lunch break. But uh, the idea is um, there's a lot of value to capture. And I can only share the information. I can only, you know, um, share some of these points. But I feel like every one of these industries um, that you guys have mentioned, whether it's gold mining or, or real estate or entertainment or power, infrastructure, trading, um, brokerage services, you know, brokering deals is, um, has value, right? I, I think there are some people in this room that, you know, may need capital. And I think there are some people in this room that may be able to provide capital, right? So I think that bridge in itself is very healthy. Um, and so, you know, the invite list here was uh, 100 people, maybe 85, something like that. And what I wanna do is um, help us capture as much of this value as possible. <clears throat> so El Salvador um, is our case study that we like to share. Um, we also have a, a case study that we don't like to share, which is Kazakhstan um, and Venezuela, right? So what happened in their respective markets is very interesting for us. Um, it, it gives us a very clear path of what this industry should be doing. My sponsors agree, uh, a lot of um, the industry agrees that we want, we, Ethiopia, want to end up like El Salvador. We do not want to end up like Kazakhstan or Venezuela. And I apologize to my friends from Kazakhstan and Venezuela, but that's the honest reality because they have failed tremendously in those two countries. Um, they first succeeded in attracting capital. Um, dozens of miners um, joined the race to buy energy, to buy power, to secure power purchase agreements from the state utilities. The state utilities uh, complied. They were happy to do so. They were able to generate Forex, right? Um, USD, but it wasn't sustainable. They weren't able to continue doing it because there was a great deal of, uh, let's call it human error, if we want to be brutal, corruption, right? But some of these officials uh, felt as though, um, uh, let's say, rules didn't matter, and you had uh, an aggressive piling in of miners, a gold rush, if you will, and then you had a, um, a reversal. We do not want to end up like that. I think the case studies have been very clear. I'm not going to focus on 
the failures because it gives us a good guide forward of what not to do. Um, and so transparency is good, uh, openness is good, and I think uh, we're going to follow an El Salvador model uh, where they've been able to raise uh, money through government bonds, invest in power infrastructure using the geothermal facilities that they have. They have volcanic activity. And so um, the El Salvador model is quite perfect for Ethiopia. Ethiopia has the Nile River. Um, uh, you know, one side of the Nile starts in Ethiopia, the other side starts in Uganda. They, of course, meet and flow into Egypt. Um, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, I think, is a beautiful project, and I think we should follow in the footsteps of El Salvador, and they've now introduced it as legal tender, and you go to a Starbucks, you go to a McDonald's, you can pay for it in Bitcoin. So this brings us back to our discussion of what is money, store of value, uh, meaning of exchange, uh, unit of account, right? All of these things are natural uh, fields for money. Um, that's how you define money. And we see some countries continue with kind of prosperous uh, acts, right? Um, this is a country that uh, was warned by the IMF and the World Bank not to follow this lead, right? Not to continue this tragedy. And it's very reminiscent to Ethiopia, raising money for the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, being denied financing, right? Us having to go to Chinese partners, us having to go to our domestic market, right? I think with large payroll uh, payers like Gitaon will know, and you know, at some point you had to deduct for the dam. This was a national effort, right? Um, this wasn't supported by the global community. But here we are, uh, and I think we're, we're on a good direction to continue where, where El Salvador has provided a, a smart case study. So now we get to Ethiopia, um, and I think this is a good way to open um, our conference. I think this is um, the points we want to drive home. Uh, I don't think it's being reported enough, right? You have the... the the media outlets um, around the world, Bloomberg, CNBC, uh, France 24, uh, RFI. Um, we've had a lot of interest in, in, in media come and, and talk to us. I think there needs to be more. They do about two stories a year on Bitcoin mining in Ethiopia. They should do five, they should do 10, they should do a lot more. And so um, I think there's an audience of readers um, I think it's a very novel project, right? What other industry um, do you see a three-year progress create $123 million in revenue for a government entity, right? Um, and, and, and we as, as advocates, as educators, as investors and so on, you know, we'll open up the stage to everyone here. But the idea is uh, we see what's happening and we act. So we're, we're going to have some, uh, some homework assignments for everyone here, <laughs> how we do things at Bitcoin Burr. Um, we're going to have you know, um, a frank discussion as to what can we all do within a week, a month, six months. In April, we're going to have a follow-up report. And it's going to see to it that things get better, right? Now, bottom line, my investors are beautiful, the sponsors are amazing, um, but they come second, right? Uh, half of Ethiopia, half of 135 million people don't have electricity in their households, right? As of today, right now, it's a big country, it's a rural country, we haven't developed the infrastructure, the substations, and so on, and so I think there's a bridge here between our sponsors, the, let's call it the financing world, right? Cheap debt, Japan, and so on. Demographics, Ethiopia is young, Africa is young, they're gonna come here. So we have to give them a good, hospitable um, home, right? Dahab Miners, uh, Big Cluster, West Data, No Ones, um, 
four of our five sponsors are international. Um, and so the idea is Ethiopian um, electric power. Um, they're generating a great deal of capital. Um, I would now like uh, Ethiopian Electric Utility, EEP, um, to be generating just as much capital. Um, and we have, I think, on that thank you note, um, one of our sponsors, our leading sponsor, uh, Mr. Yo Ray Youssef, the CEO of, you're gonna join me on stage, brother. Come, come right up on stage. So Mr. Ray Youssef um, is the CEO of no ones, uh, he'll tell you. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Please have a seat, brother. Give me a. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 